Hey guys, Zen here, and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna speak on the huge new patch for Rainbow Six Siege, as well as a mammoth update coming in year nine, even before year eight comes to a close. Guys, let's get it started. So first up, this operator, and also this operator. These two, both Iana and Warden, have found their way to the very top of the meta in Rainbow Six Siege, and it has now been confirmed that change is coming. We've been observing both Iana and Warden's continuous ascent to the top tiers of presence in matches. We're aware of the situation and the issues behind it. Iana's high presence is mainly driven by her access to frag grenades, while Warden's high presence relates to the strength of the 1.5 sites on defender loadouts. The community's sentiments over this topic are in alignment with ours. These operators need changes, and will take action in an upcoming mid-season patch to make sure they feel less like must-picks and more like weighted choices within a squad's lineup. So, in this message, there are some cryptic hints to some even deeper changes. Of course, it's obvious that Iana and Warden will be nerfed. Anytime an operator sits at that top spot for a while, change is always to follow, and at least for Iana, that's been the case for nearly a year, while Warden has definitely crept up more so recently. But they make it clear that both frag grenades on attack and 1.5 scopes specifically for the defenders are an issue, and so these two elements will also be seeing some level of change, which could mean removing the scope from a few defenders beyond just Warden. I think another clear and obvious point here is that the 1.5 had the exact same effect on Thorn. She sat in the bottom half of the graphs and was considered one of the worst trap operators in the game, and then she just gets a 1.5, and her popularity skyrockets in just one season. Unlike most other shooters, the zoom of your optic is absolutely essential in Rainbow Six Siege, and requires an incredibly delicate balance. And right now, a 1.5 can take a low tier or middle of the road operator and bring them up into the must pick category, essentially overnight. But I struggle to see exactly what they can do to fix this. Beyond outright removing the 1.5 in its entirety, simply shifting it around to other operators usually has the same effect, and then just taking it away can also bury an operator into irrelevancy. And so, how they remedy this is a huge change to look out for. As for frag grenades, I think yes, they are powerful, and usually the attackers with them become quite popular. But I think the most obvious fix is to reduce the count to just one frag grenade if you are going to bring one along. There is also the possibility of changing the effectiveness of frags by reducing the blast radius or lethality of them, but for me, it's about how many are available available, especially if you consider that a full team of attackers, all with frag grenades, brings the count up to 10, which is a lot of output. And so, these are some huge elements that are fundamentally changing the Siege meta, and surprisingly, it won't just be Warden and Iana getting nerfed. And these updates are only the beginning, because Ubisoft have detailed changes that are coming throughout the rest of Year 8, as well as updates we'll see in Year 9. The first is to Azami. They say, Kiba Barriers have allowed Azami to become one of the strongest operators in the Defender lineup, giving her the ability to control areas and create angles which are difficult for opponents to deal with and see. We'll be making changes to decrease the robustness of her gadget and to give attackers the option to play more aggressively against her. Now, it's obvious that Azami is a powerhouse of an operator, and most of that is centered around the Kiba barrier. And I think the main reason for that is that there just isn't much you can actually do to take the barrier out itself. Now, yes, if it's covering a window or door barricade, there is the three melee method, but at a distance, you're focused to use essentially utility to take them out, and with how many Azami gets, it means the majority of those items get used up. And there's also the fact that, in some circumstances, you'll never know a Kiba is even present. Like on a softwall, for example. If Azami puts a Kiba on one side of it, you'll never know it's there unless it's peeking out of a hole in the wall or something like that. A quick solution could be to treat it just like they do with a reinforced wall. You get that diamond pattern on the opposite side of the wall so players know it's reinforced. Maybe with a Kiba, you put a star where the kunai knife is deployed, or cracks in the wall to show the other side that it isn't just a soft wall. There are many ways Azami can be tweaked to get her just right, but she will be a focus moving forward in year eight and beyond. They also mentioned Blackbeard, Solus, and even Recruit are all operators that will be seeing some adjustments over the next year, and they're in the prototype phases for changes that'll be made soon. But we finally got an update on what's probably the biggest change for next season in year eight season four with the shield rework, and here it is. We want shield operators to feel strong while taking away the feeling of powerlessness when facing off against them. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, a player should feel that they have a chance against a shield operator, and on the other side, a shield operator should not be bullied without consequence or risk. Changes such as removing hip fire while the shield is out will help to remove frustrations on both sides of the battle, and reinforce the idea that with a team around them, a shield operator can be a true force to be reckoned with. Now, I don't know if you guys remember this, but shield operators are planned to be getting an Oryx-like push
push to pummel enemies to the ground. It's a big change where if you're close enough, you'll be able to use the shield and push an enemy on their back and potentially secure a kill. This changes the entire dynamic of also playing against a shield as well because the current tactic, unless you're Oryx himself, is to get close enough to melee the shield and open it up to receive fire. Now, there's really no mention of that here, so it's possible it's been scrapped, but shield ops will be seeing a huge, just massive change in a short amount of time that will finally make them more dangerous to those who oppose them. So for year eight and year nine, you're looking for a change to Warden, Iana, Blackbeard, Solus, and Recruit, some kind of change to frag grenades and the coveted 1.5 scope, a huge rework to shields, and lots of tweaking to Azami. And now, this. Xbox has made a huge leap forward in trying to combat toxicity on their platforms with an all new enforcement strike system. And this is ultra important for anyone playing multiplayer games, including Rainbow Six Siege. So in total, any given player can receive eight strikes. And of course, to get a strike, most times it'll require someone to report you. And so with just two strikes, a player will be suspended from the platform for one day. With four strikes, that player is banned for seven days. And if you somehow get all eight strikes, you'll be banned from Xbox for a full three 365 days or one year where you won't be able to use parties, messaging, multiplayer, or even LFG groups to find other people to play with. Now, once you get a strike, it remains on your account for six months. And if you get any more within that time, it'll be added. So one strike can very quickly turn into two, which results in a suspension. But as of right now, with the launch of this new system, everyone starts off with a clean slate. And they did mention that in all of last year, less than 1% of players ever received a suspension let alone a full year ban. And so this is a gigantic leap forward for Xbox's online security and something that most players should take into consideration. One of the major developments that's happened recently in Rainbow Six Siege has been the reputation system. Over time, they've really strengthened it for people who enjoy this game. And here in year eight season three, they'll finally make it so that players can report each other's good works rather than just only negative stuff. These companies are taking toxicity and online gaming super serious at this point. And it could mean that if you're unaware, you could be banned for as long as a year on your favorite platforms. Next up, the collab of the century with Rainbow Six Siege coming together with Microsoft's Halo franchise for a brand new Elite. Now, yes, this has leaked online and yes, Ubisoft is coming in strong with the copyright takedowns, so we can't show it here. But Sledge is Master Chief in the next iconic Elite set. Now, admittedly, this isn't too far out for Rainbow Six Siege because just recently they teamed up with Square Enix on an Elite for Iana and they also kept things under their own umbrella and gave Floris an Assassin's Creed Elite. But this is obviously a great way to recognize a massively iconic franchise like Halo and Rainbow Six Siege, and also a way to bring in fans from another huge FPS franchise. And finally, Rainbow Six Mobile. Guys, it seems like this game was announced forever ago, and to some extent, it was. But finally, they've revealed that the game will soft launch this month. And if you haven't kept up with what to expect, here are some facts to subside your taste buds. One, every single operator will be from Rainbow Six Siege. Lots of questions about new operators made specifically for this game, and that has not been announced. And we know every launch operator already exists in Siege, including some fan favorites like Bandit, Sledge, Habana, and Kavera. Two, the game will have its own playlist, like the single round matches. Because it's a mobile game, you need something quick, and what's quicker than a single round of Rainbow Six Siege? Three, the game will have a ranked playlist, essentially the full ranked experience just on your mobile device. And four, the roadmap, the launch, full seasons, and new operator releases are all expected here. Now, the launch of this game is a massive step for the Rainbow Six franchise because it opens up the floodgates to potentially millions of brand new gamers that have never interacted with Siege. Yes, it is mobile, but all of the destruction and tactics that make Siege special will be here as well. So it's something to be aware of. And guys, that's it. If you did enjoy, leave a like on the video and subscribe with notifications so you can be here for the next one. Hey, I'm out.